Hey guys, welcome to our weathering part two lesson. Today we're going to wrap up the topic of weathering and erosion. To talk about weathering, we're going to address three different topics. First, we're going to go over chemical weathering. Then we're going to ask the question, what affects the rate of weathering? We're going to find out that it's rock composition and climate. And then third, we're going to talk about how weathering produces our soil. Let's get started. All right, so just as a recap, physical weathering and chemical weathering. Physical weathering, sometimes called mechanical weathering, is any time we break rocks into sediments. Chemical weathering is changing the chemical composition of rocks or changing rocks using chemical reactions. You can see in the diagrams on our slide that our first rock has been weathered using physical or mechanical weathering. It's been broken into pieces. However, our second rock has undergone chemical weathering. So what happened with this rock is that this rock used to be a completely normal rock, but it got exposed to some acid and it kind of ate away some holes into the rock. That's chemical weathering. All right, so here's another example of chemical weathering. It happens with anything made of copper. So for example, your pennies. So before your penny might be this shiny brassy color, but afterwards it undergoes some chemical reactions that change it and make it turn green. We're changing it chemically. Here's some other examples of chemical weathering. This rock all used to be a gray color, but inside this rock, there are bits of iron. And you guys might remember that iron rusts. That's a chemical reaction. So here, the red parts of this rock are chemically weathered because they've rusted. Or we have this statue. And this statue, once again, used to look like this. But after chemical weathering, it changed some of the rock. So now it looks like this. And then we have a third picture similar to the picture on the slide above. All right, you're ready for your first check-in? Go ahead, get started. All right, next we're gonna talk about what affects the rates of weathering. First, it's rock composition. Second, it's climate. All right, so when we're talking about the rate of weathering, as a reminder, we're just talking about the speed of weathering. So some rocks, are going to weather more quickly than others. The first factor that plays into this is, is rock composition. So rock composition is just the type of material we have inside of a rock. So rocks, for example, that are softer weather more quickly. Picture rocks that are like chalk. Hard rocks weather slowly. Think of a rock like granite that's, that's used for tombstones. These rocks take a really, really long time to weather. The second thing that affects the rate of weathering is climate. Now, just as a reminder, the climate is the weather patterns over a long period of time. And the climate changes the type of weathering that occurs. In this picture below, the weathering that happened in this canyon caused all of these weird rock formations and this canyon to form. Here are some examples of how climates can affect the rate of weathering. First off, if you're in a desert climate, you're gonna have more wind erosion. If you're in a snowy climate, you're more likely to have ice erosion. If you're in an area that gets heavy rainfall as part of its climate, you're more likely to have water erosion. All right, go ahead and move in to your second check-in. All right, our last topic for this lesson is that weathering produces soil. Soil is just a thin, loose layer of material on the ground where plants can grow. So soil allows our plants, our crops, and forests to grow. But soil can actually take thousands and thousands of years to develop. That's because Soil comes from a mixture of weathered rock 
and decaying material. So any like dead organisms on the ground or dead plants decay very, very slowly over time, mix with weathered rocks, and that's what creates this brown, rich soil that you have in this picture below. Soil is composed of three different types of weathered material. First, we have sand. You can see in this picture all these different grains of sand. Sand has our largest dirt grains. Second, we have silt. Silt has medium-sized dirt grains. You can kind of see that in this picture below. And then last but not least, we have clay. Clay has our smallest dirt grains. In fact, they're so small that it's hard for water to get through. So we say that clay is impermeable. All right, that's it for our lesson today. Go ahead and move to your third check-in. As always, if you need help, talk to your classmates, but then talk to me.